At 0430 hours, the radar screen lit up with six hostile contacts, and the young petty officer's hand froze over the alarm button. Venezuelan warships had formed a wall directly across the USS George Washington's path through international waters. What those commanders didn't know was they just made a catastrophic error in judgment. If you want to see what happens when a regional navy challenges 100,000 tons of American supercarrier firepower, hit subscribe because this confrontation exposed the brutal mathematics of modern naval warfare. Within 90 seconds, every officer aboard was racing to battle stations. The Venezuelan blockade forms. Six Venezuelan naval vessels took position in a precise formation that military analysts would later call either exceptionally bold or dangerously reckless. Leading this intercepting force was the frigate Almirante Brian, a 3,200-ton modified Lupo-class vessel that Venezuela acquired from Italy in the 1980s. Supporting her were four Guaycamacuto-class patrol boats and a single Constitution-class corvette each carrying outdated Automat anti-ship missiles with a maximum range of just 180 kilometers. These ships had departed their home port of Puerto Cabello under direct orders from Caracas. Demonstrate national sovereignty and do not yield to American pressure under any circumstances. The commanders aboard those vessels understood the assignment, but what they couldn't see from their radar screens was about to change everything the USS George Washington alone displaced more tonnage than Venezuela's entire operational surface fleet combined. Yet someone in Caracas had decided this was a fight worth picking. Because while they tracked one massive target on their displays, the Americans had already surrounded them from three dimensions they hadn't even considered. Aegis systems lock on. The USS Porter and USS Kearney activated their AN slash spy 1D radar systems. And within 0.3 seconds, every Venezuelan vessel became a tracked target in the Aegis Combat System Network. This technology can simultaneously track over 100 targets and guide dozens of SM-2 missiles with pinpoint accuracy up to 170 kilometers away. The Venezuelan ships were equipped with outdated British DA-08 air search radars from the 1970s that couldn't even detect low-flying threats beyond 60 kilometers. The technological gap wasn't measured in years, but in entire generations of warfare evolution. Each American destroyer carried 96 vertical launch cells loaded with a mix of Tomahawk cruise missiles, SM-2 air defense missiles, and ASROC anti-submarine weapons. The Aegis system had already calculated firing solutions for all six Venezuelan vessels, updating threat assessments every 0.05 seconds with a kill probability exceeding 95% for each target. What made this moment truly dangerous was that the Venezuelan radar operators had no idea they were already locked, targeted, and could be eliminated before their own weapon systems finished their targeting sequence. The submarine nobody detected. 30 feet beneath the surface, a Virginia-class attack submarine had positioned herself perfectly between the Venezuelan formation and their nearest naval base. These submarines cost $3.45 billion each and carry capabilities that make surface ships obsolete in modern warfare. Her sonar suite could hear a Venezuelan diesel engine from 200 miles away while remaining completely silent using pump jet propulsion technology. The Venezuelan Navy operates two German-built Type 209 submarines but both had been docked for maintenance issues since 2019 due to lack of spare parts and technical expertise. This meant the Americans had complete underwater dominance without any credible threat from below. The Virginia-class boat carried 12 Tomahawk missiles and 25 Mark 48 heavyweight torpedoes, each capable of breaking a frigate in half with a single hit. Her commander had already identified optimal firing positions and escape routes though he sincerely hoped those calculations would remain theoretical. But here's what nobody talks about. That submarine had been tracking the Venezuelan vessels for 72 hours before they even attempted their blockade. Caracas realizes the mistake. The secure phone line between the Venezuelan Ministry of Defense and the Almirante Brian started receiving increasingly frantic calls as dawn broke. 
intelligence reports coming into Caracas painted a catastrophic picture their leadership hadn't anticipated. Russian military advisors, embedded with Venezuelan forces, were reportedly urging immediate de-escalation after their own satellite reconnaissance confirmed the full American force composition. Venezuela's defense budget for 2024 stood at $438 million total, while a single American carrier strike group represents over $30 billion in assets and costs $6.5 million per day to operate. The political calculation made in comfortable government offices suddenly confronted the reality of naval warfare mathematics. President Maduro's inner circle understood that this confrontation couldn't be spun as a victory if even one Venezuelan vessel was damaged or sunk. Senior Venezuelan naval officers were reportedly presenting worst-case scenario briefs that estimated their entire blockading force could be neutralized in under seven minutes if hostilities commenced. What they didn't anticipate was how their own commanders would solve this impossible situation while saving face. The targeting radar incident. At 0547 hours, one of the Venezuelan Guaycamacuto class patrol boats made a critical error. Her weapons officer activated the fire control radar, painting the USS George Washington with targeting electromagnetic emissions. In naval warfare protocols, this action is considered one step below actually firing a weapon and justifies immediate defensive response. The American destroyer's electronic warfare suite detected the radar emission in microseconds and automatically triggered countermeasures. Within eight seconds, the porter had activated her own fire control systems, achieved missile lock on all six Venezuelan vessels, and transmitted the threat data to every platform in the strike group. The carrier's defensive systems went to full alert status, and four FA-18 Super Hornets on deck alert status were cleared for immediate launch. Combat Air Patrol pilots, already airborne, received weapons-free authorization pending confirmation of hostile intent, their fingers hovering over weapon release buttons as they monitored the tactical frequency. The entire incident lasted 22 seconds before the Venezuelan radar shut down. Those 22 seconds represented the closest moment to actual weapons fire, and neither nation's public ever learned how narrow that margin truly was. The face-saving withdrawal. The Venezuelan commander aboard Almirante Brayon made a decision that likely prevented his ships from becoming underwater graves. He contacted the American carrier on International Channel 16, announcing that his patrol mission had been successfully completed and his formation would now return to port after demonstrating Venezuelan maritime sovereignty. The carefully chosen words allowed both sides to step back without either appearing to completely surrender their position. Venezuelan state television later showed footage of their ships at sea, claiming they had successfully challenged American aggression in Venezuelan waters. American officials simply noted in routine reports that foreign vessels cleared the transit corridor without incident. Intelligence intercepts later revealed that the Venezuelan commander had been threatened with court-martial if he withdrew, yet faced the same fate if his ships were damaged, leaving him to choose between political punishment and physical annihilation. The truth was somewhere between both narratives. Professional naval officers had prevented politicians from starting a fight that would have lasted approximately 11 minutes before Venezuela's entire surface fleet ceased to exist as a functional force. The USS George Washington continued her transit through international waters without firing a single shot, proving that overwhelming power speaks louder than any weapon system. This standoff taught every regional navy a lesson about the cost of political theater on the open ocean. If you found this breakdown of naval confrontation tactics eye-opening, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon because we're covering more military encounters that changed modern warfare doctrine forever.